The new covenant is a spiritual one, and the old one was flesh. The born-again believer is a spiritual man, no longer the natural man. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondwoman, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born according to the flesh, and he of the free woman through promise, which things are symbolic. For these are two, the two covenants, the one from Mount Sinai, which gives birth to bondage, which is Hagar. For this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, which corresponds to the Jerusalem which is now, and is in bondage with her children. But the Jerusalem above is free, which is the mother of us all. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are children of promise. But as he who was born according to the flesh then persecuted him who was born according to the Spirit, even so it is now. Nevertheless, what does the scripture say? Cast out the bondwoman and her son. For the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. Just as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, therefore know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. And the scriptures foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preach the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you all the nations shall be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. You see, faith in Christ means being submitted to Christ. Christ is Lord and Savior of their lives. He responds by sending the Spirit of God to live in them. They live according to the Spirit, no longer in the flesh. The new covenant is spiritual, unlike the old. Likewise, other religions are worldly and not of the Spirit. And those without the Spirit cannot understand the things of God. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. But the natural man does not receive the things from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You see, the Old Testament was but a shadow of the heavenly things. Without the circumcision of the heart, man is still the flesh man, the natural man. The New Testament requires the spiritual man, the born-again man. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you live according to the Spirit, you will live. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we may know the things that have been freely given to us by God. There is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. 
And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Jesus said, That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. <clears throat> Most religions today do not understand the spirit birth. They are of the world and of the flesh. They do not follow Jesus Christ. They do not receive the Holy Spirit because they do not want to be submitted to Christ and make him Lord of their lives. They don't want to read his word and live it. They don't want to give up sinning. Therefore, they're happy to have false religion which soothes the conscience and tolerates sinning. Sinning is evidence in their lives. They do not listen to the sin warnings in the Bible. Ask a person who is born again what his experience is like. It's quite different than just joining a church and doing church activities. Many think that church membership is salvation, but it's not. Summary. The new birth is the evidence of salvation. The Holy Spirit, which lives in a follower of Jesus, is what makes the natural man a spirit man. He has the seal of the Holy Spirit, which tells him he or she is a child of God. The new covenant is evidenced by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Those who go directly to Jesus in prayer and obey his words, will receive the Holy Spirit. A born-again person knows they're born again. They have become a new creation and live a different life. That which is flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. The New Testament is spiritual. <clears throat>